All right, so let's go on page 108 when we are done. We are moving into the polar coordinate system, which should be a brand new uh, coordinate system for, um, for, I would think, all of you. You may have seen some polar graphs before, but not really known what the heck was going on. So um, these are actually both coordinate grids. But um, this is the Cartesian coordinate plane, or the, you know, your x, y axis that you're used to, your rectangular coordinate plane. Um, and then this is what your polar axis or your polar grid looks like. So here we're used to going, you know, to the right and then up or left and down or whatever it is. Uh, but on the polar grid, you're going to go out to a specific radius and then rotate around to where you want to be. We have different ways of graphing things because one may make more sense than the other depending on what we're applying it to. Okay, so we're going to look at how we can... Um, graph in both and then be able to convert back and forth and then look at some really cool graphs along the way. So let's talk about the polar coordinate system. So when it says, up until now you have graphed a rectangular plane containing an x and y axis, we'll now look at another system called the polar coordinate system. So to form that, you fix a point O. So here is our point O right here, point O. And that is called the pole or the origin. So we can still refer to it as the origin. It's where we start when we're graphing, but it is the pole for the polar axis, the pole that everything rotates around. Okay? From O, we, can, we construct an initial ray. So here is our initial ray right here. That is called the polar axis. So unlike the rectangular coordinate system where we have an X and a Y axis, and um, we don't really we don't have that over here. Sometimes you will see it drawn looking like an x and y axis. That's more just to help you with where the numbers are around the circle. But really, there's just the polar axis, and it's just a ray that would be right there. Okay. All right. So then here's a point P, and it says for every point, for each point P, it's assigned a polar coordinate. So your polar coordinates are in the form of r comma theta. So instead of x comma y, it's r comma theta. So you have some radius that you go out on the polar axis, then you rotate around whatever that angle is. And it says r is a direct, oof, r is a directed distance from O to P. So here's r from O to P. What else has a directed distance that you, where are my AP physics people? What has a directed distance? Vectors, yes. Oh, yes. Okay, so all this is going to start, we're going to get into vectors after we're done with this. It's all going to sort of connect together, all right? Um, theta is the counterclockwise directed angle formed by the polar axis and the line segment OP. So I go out whatever my radius is and I rotate around. That again could also represent a vector. We're not going to talk about vectors yet, but when we get there, it'll, like I said, it'll all kind of come together. Okay, so, so then when R is negative, because we can have a negative radius, we graph the point R comma pi plus theta, or theta plus pi. I don't know how, it doesn't really matter, but. And we'll talk about that when we get there. That's the official rule, and yes, we can do it that way. And I mean, technically, we end up doing that because we're going to get the right answers. But I'm going to show you how you don't have to really think about adding pi to whatever your angle is. Okay. So let's look at these two grids that we have here. So these two red points that are there, they are in the exact same place. If I was able to take these two grids and lay them on top of each other and put their origins so they're right in the middle, those points are literally in the exact same place. So these two coordinates, they get me to the exact same place, but it, it just looks different because I'm getting there on different grids. Does that make sense to you? So it's like a different way of getting there. So to get to zero, three, I go zero, left and right, and then go up three. To get to this point, I would go out to three on my polar axis and rotate around to pi halves. I end up in the exact same spot, okay? And really for this point, I would say either one of them One's really not that much harder than the other. If you actually know where pi halves is, it's no big deal. So let's look at another point. Let's look at the point 2, 2. Okay. So 
So if I'm going to go over here and I'm going to plot the point 2, 2, it's a piece of cake, right? Then we're going to draw in what we did. From the origin, we went to the right 2, then we went up 2, right? So this is 2, and this is 2. So the distance from the origin to that point, I should be able to figure out. This is a right triangle, specifically what kind of right triangle? Isosceles right triangle, which means my angle and my acute angles in an isosceles right triangle are what? The same. So more specifically, they are? Yes, it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. This is a 45 degree angle right here. So since that is a 45 degree angle, finding this distance is a piece of cake. It requires zero work if you actually paid attention in geometry. And if this is two, this is two, what's the hypotenuse? Two square roots of two. Remember that? Two, two, two square root of two? We've done that as well. Special right triangles. You need to know them so you can just rattle them off. Okay, so that means that I can get to this same point a different way. Instead of going to the right two and up two, I could go out two square roots of two and rotate around 45 degrees. So my polar coordinate could look like this, two square roots of two. What's 45 degrees in radians? Five fourths. So that's what the ordered pair would look like in the coordinate plane. So um, square root of two is about 1.4, which means two square root of two is about 2.8. So if I go out, about 2.8, rotate around pi fourths, I would end up right about there. You can see that is literally in the exact same spot as it is on the other one. Okay. More questions to you? So these ordered pairs are all x, y. These ordered pairs are all r, theta. Any questions at all? All right, so let's talk about how we're going to plot these when different things happen. So it says concentric circles are frequently shown. So your polar axis is made with concentric circles. Concentric meaning with center, with the same center. The prefix con means with, like con queso means with cheese, right? It's the extent of my, extent of my Spanish knowledge, right? But that's what I, but I, that's what I know, with cheese. Um, so concentric is with centers. They have the same center. So we're going to graph this point A, we're going to plot point A. It's 2, 7, pi, 6. Now, some of these angles are labeled. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. But you should know how to get around a unit circle. So I'm going to go out to 2. Watch your scale here. I'm going to go out to 2 on my polar axis. Then I'm going to rotate around on that circle until I get to 7, pi, 6. And then I'm going to plot my point. And that is point A. If the numbers are decent and the angles are decent, this is easier than whatever that point would be in the rectangular coordinate plane. All right, so you try to do you try to do point B. I'll give you a second to think through it, and then I'll graph it and talk you through it. So for B. I would go out to 1 half, which is right there. I'm going to rotate around to 3 pi fourths. That's not marked, but can we find it? Yes, because pi fourths is halfway, so 3 pi fourths would be, I know it's in the second quadrant, so it's going to be right here. And that is B. We good? All right, so for C, I have a negative angle. I have a positive radius, so I go out to 3. But I have a negative angle, which means I do what? Rotate clockwise, right? So here, and I go pi thirds. That would end me up right there. And that is point C. All right, now D has a negative radius. Okay, so now remember, there's two different ways to get to that. Um, you know, the actual rule way and a different way. But if I, let's see, I'm at 
negative one pi fourths. So it says I can plot one comma pi fourths plus pi. So pi, pi plus pi fourths, that's just gonna be five pi fourths, right? That'll put me in the third quadrant. So I could do that. So let's just go ahead and, and plot that one and then we'll talk about it. So we, I can go to one and I can rotate around to five pi fourths, which is right there. Okay, so that's actually, what's the letter D? But I want you to look at the fact that this, uh, this stupid board doesn't really let me do dotted lines easily. I'm trying to make a dotted line here. Well, I can't, so apparently dotted lines are no longer gonna exist for me, but. Um, so pi fourths, this is pi fourths, right? But I had a negative radius. So another way to do it without having to actually like add your angles up is if I have negative one pi fourths, I'm going to pretend like it's positive still. I'm gonna to go to one, I'm gonna to rotate to pi fourths, but because I'm adding pi, that's like adding 180. So if I just travel along that diameter and I pass through the pole and go one on the other side, it gets me there. Okay, does that make sense? So I'm just gonna to go to one pi fourths. I didn't mean to actually plot that one. That is not my point there. You gotta be careful touching this board. Go to one pi fourths, but then I pass through the pole and then I'm at my negative one. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so you try to do E. See if it really makes sense to you. Ready? So since it's a negative radius, I'm going to pretend like it's positive. I'm going to go to 2.5. I'm going to rotate around to 4 pi thirds, which is right here. But then I'm going to pass through the pole, and that's where my point is. And I don't know why there's another point over there. I guess I keep touching the board and not realizing it. And that is point E. Oh, my gosh. I want my old board back. <laughs> it's so frustrating. All right, are we good with that? Okay, so you do F. All right, so negative radius, I pretend like it's positive, so I go out to three. I rotate to negative pi six, but then I pass through the pole and my point is over there. That is my point F. Okay. Any questions about how to get those? We're all good? Okay, great. Okay, so. Here's some kind of confusing words that I'll re-explain and make sure it makes sense to you. But while each pair of polar coordinates plots a unique point, each point does not have unique coordinates. Okay, so again, I'll re-explain what that means after we actually plot something. So in general, a point with polar coordinates, R theta, can also be represented by R comma 2N or theta plus 2 pi N or negative r theta plus 2n plus 1 times pi. And don't worry, we're not going to have to remember those. We're I'm just going to kind of explain to you what that means here. Okay, so let's plot this point that's in number seven, then we'll, that way we'll have something to refer to. So two, five pi thirds, I'm gonna go out to two, I'm gonna rotate around to five pi thirds, and I'm gonna end up right there, okay? So there's the point I have there in number seven. So what this is saying is, although I gave you this point, 
And when we plot this point, there's, if we all plot this point and we all do it correctly, we should all have the exact same thing. But if I said, what is this ordered pair? We could all have a different ordered pair written and we could all be correct. Because I can get here by going to 2 and going 5 pi thirds or 2 and going negative 5 pi, or I'm sorry, negative pi thirds. Or I could go to 2 and I could rotate around 3 times and end up there. Or I could go the other way, right? So there's really an infinite amount of ordered pairs we could write that would represent this point. Does that make sense to you? That's why it says, while each pair of polar coordinates plots a unique point like we just did, each point does not have unique coordinates. And so there's an infinite amount of them. We are not going to um, find an infinite amount of them. Right now, it's just asking us to do um, three different pairs going from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. All right, and so you can only have a total of four, the one that's given to you and the other three. So we're not, we're not rotating around more than once, basically. So the way I go about this is that if I have, if they have given me a positive radius, the first one I write has a positive radius, two. And then I'm gonna have two other points that are gonna have a negative radius. That for a total of four that would go from negative two pi to two pi. So I just said I can go to two and I can rotate around to five pi thirds or I can go to two and I can go a negative pi thirds. So this first order pair that would give me the same point is gonna be negative pi thirds. Okay. Then I wanna think about the fact that I have this diameter, right? Like this. And this is where I land when I have a positive radius. I can have a negative radius, though, and as long as I land over here with my negative radius, on, with my angle, I'll pass through and still end up in the same point, right? So with a negative radius, I would want to end up two right here. So I would need to use that two pi thirds angle. You with me on that, Layla? So to get here, I can go a positive two pi thirds with a negative radius and end up in the same spot. So this is two pi thirds right here. The other way that I can end up right here is by doing a negative angle. What would that negative angle be? Negative what? Four pi thirds. Is it a little bit more confusing to come up with a negative angle sometimes? Here's how I want you to think about this. If I asked you, what is your third quadrant pi thirds angle, you could tell me like that, right? When I'm rotating negative, think about, so think about if I was going to four pi thirds, I'd go, I'd go through one, two, that's the third quadrant I come to. When I go this way, it is one, two, the third quadrant I come to. So it's still, you can still think of it as your third quadrant angle, it's just negative, okay? Does that make sense? That can kind of help you reason, reason your way around it. And so this is negative four pi thirds. There's a couple of things you can double check yourself with when you're done. So yes, we just wrote down three, but there's a total of four. Of the total of four, I should have two positive radius, two negative radius. Also, if I ignore the, the plus or minus on the angles, I should have one from each quadrant. So I've got, this is my first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant, right? Notice that I don't have a four pi thirds and a negative four pi thirds, because that wouldn't get me in the same spot. It's all about landing in the same, same place. All right, so let's try this one here. So when I don't have a big old circle to work with, I draw one. It does not have to be beautiful, but here is, oh, well, it would help if I could actually draw. Um, here's my circle. Here's my polar axis, right? So I think, okay, where would this point end up? This negative 5 negative seven pi fours. Okay, so negative seven pi fours puts me in what quadrant? First, right? Gets me over here. But then that's a negative five, so I pass through. That's where I end up. So I can tell, even by my bad drawing, that I end up in the third quadrant. Would you agree with that? Okay. So, I, but when I had my negative radius, I actually landed in the first quadrant, right? So I usually, what I do anyway, is where I land with a negative radius, I put a star. This is the actual point that I want. But if I'm gonna have a negative radius, I need to land there so that I can pass through and end up right here. You with me on that? Okay, so 
Uh, they gave me a negative radius, which means the first one I'm going to write is the other one with the negative radius. Then I'm going to do the two with the positive. Well, you can do them in whatever order you want. It's just the most logical to me. So that means I still want to land here since I have a negative radius. I landed here by going negative 7 pi force. What's the other way to land there? Pi force, right? Now for the positive radius, I need to actually land here, which is in the third quadrant. What's your third quadrant pi fourths angle? 5 pi fourths. And if we go negative, it's your negative second quadrant angle, so that'd be a negative what? 3 pi fourths. Good. We good on that? All right, so I'm going to give you a second. I want you to do this last one. When you're done, check yourself up here. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so I told you, like, this is the order I do them in because just logically it makes sense to come out of my brain in that order to make sure I don't miss anything. But for the first time in a long time, you have an assignment in Delta Math. Some of them are actual Delta Math questions. Some of them that are ones that I put in so you didn't have a Delta Math and a worksheet to go with it. Um, but because of that, I only have so much control over stuff when I put things in. So you're going to be asked in a question like this, you're going to have three ordered pairs, which I would write them down, you know, somewhere. But then you have to put them in in a specific order. It doesn't let me say, hey, take these in any order. That's not an option that I have. So what you have to do when you have these three written down, we'll just think of them as A, B, and C right now, okay? Pay close attention because if you put these in wrong and you get them wrong, I don't feel sorry for you, okay? Um, you have to put them in the ordered pairs with the angles from least to greatest. So of these three, which one has the smallest angle, A, B, or C? The smallest angle? A, yeah. So you'd put this one in first, which is the next smallest, C, and then you put this one in. Does that make sense? Okay. Then, so let's look at number eight. What's the smallest, A, B, or C? C, then what? A, then B, obviously. All right, and then let's look at seven. Which one's the smallest? C, then A, then B. Okay, do you understand how to put those in? Right? Okay, so I would not try and do it in my head. I'd write them down so then I can then put them in the right order. It's not complicated, but you have to have paid attention and listened to what I just said. Okay? Okay.